Hello there, Chris P. Williams here. I hope you're well. I've got a quick tutorial looking at the gradient tool within Affinity Photo. So I'm starting straight away with a plain white screen. And before I can do anything, I need to add a pixel layer because you need a pixel layer on which to draw your gradient. And as I move my mouse around, you can see that it clips to the center as I pass the central horizon and the central vertice and the guidelines appear. So this can be very useful for setting up gradients. For instance, if I want to do a vertical gradient, I can now left click and drag and snap to the bottom of my screen, making sure that the green line appears, telling me I'm centered and I have a perfectly straight gradient. Now, once you set up your gradient, you can see you've got two circles, one white, one gray. Now, if you click on the little color icon in the top left corner here, we can actually define those colors. So if I click on the left one and we'll select red. Click on the gray one and we'll select a yellow color. There you can see we've now got a gradient going from red to yellow. Now, once I've got my gradient color selected, I can now move this slider in the middle of the gradient bar to increase or decrease the ratio of color. So if I wanted less red and more yellow, I just raise this little slider towards the top. And if I want more red and less yellow, I slide the slider towards the bottom. So you can see it gives you quite accurate control of your gradient. So this is ideal if you're if you're drawing something from scratch and you want a nice smooth gradient, um, maybe indicating shade or whatever. Um, now, if I double click on this line anywhere apart from the slider, you can see I add another node. And now instead of going to the color control palette here, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to click on the color palette towards the right corner of Affinity Photo and I'm going to select this blue. And you can see now we have three colors within our gradient. And again, moving the new node up or down defines where that blue color lies on our gradient and how much of each color is used. And you can add however many extra nodes as you like or as you see fit. So if I double click again and I'll just go to green and we'll stick a green node there. And you can see now we've got red, blue, green and yellow. And again, I can slide that gradient slider anywhere I like along the gradient guide bar. Of course, once I've laid my gradient down, I'm not stuck with this pattern. I can actually click on the end nodes and I can alter the angle of my gradient or the distance of my gradient at any time. And conversely, if I click the top one, We'll take it from corner to corner. Again, the snapping tool is very good. If you want to turn the snapping on and off, just click this little magnet tool here. But having it on while creating gradients is very useful. And again, between these two colors, uh, we've got the blue and the, the red. You can see that it's now introduced magenta because obviously magenta is a mixture of those two colors or purple as the case may be. And as before, we can move this slider to define how much red and how much blue. And likewise with the green and the blue, we can increase the green or increase the blue just by moving the slider. And each time you add a new node, you also add automatically a new slider between the two colors. And again, between yellow and green. So you can see it's quite a flexible tool. It's quite effective and you're not limited to linear gradients like we have here. If, if for instance, now I delete this layer and I'm going to click on this little checker box here to add a new pixel layer. And this time I'm going to create a new gradient, but I'm going to select a radial gradient this time. You can see we've got a conical, a bitmap, elliptical, linear or solid. And we'll go from our center again. If I slide my mouse towards the center, waiting for the red line and the green line to appear. I know now that my cursor is perfectly centered in my image and I'll left click and drag out. And you can see there we've got a radial gradient. Again, we can control how much white and how much gray. 
So we'll keep it at 50% for now. Again, there you saw the slider will actually snap to the central position. And again, we're just going to click on the color icon here and we'll go to the left one and we'll tell it we want to be red. And we'll go to the right one and we'll tell it we want to be blue. And you can see here it's changed to a linear gradient because the last default setting in our gradient palette was linear. And there's a slight quirk uh, within Affinity Photo. I don't know why it does that, but if we click on radial, it just changes it back to a radial gradient for us. And as before, if I now double click on this gradient bar, presented with an additional node, and I can again just go to my slider and select a color. In this case, I use green. Make sure it goes back to radial. And again, even once we've committed to colors, we can still make finer adjustments to the size of our radius or our gradient. So I'll just add one more node and this time we'll define it as pink and we'll give it a small band of pink as opposed to a wide band of pink just by moving the sliders and there you go you see we've got the same level of control on a radial gradient as we had on the linear gradient okay i'll just delete this layer left clicking and dragging over my bin icon and it disappears so i'll just click on my little checkerboard add pixel layer and we've got a new starting layer. Okay, I'm just going to go back to the gradient tool and this time I'm going to select another linear gradient and drag it left to right. And this time I'm just going to show you the control tools you have in the top left corner. One is rotate, so if I click on that it rotates my gradient by 90 degrees. So four clicks should get you back to where you started and I can reverse my gradient so the gray goes from left to right and I can maintain the aspect ratio. Now the aspect ratio button only relates to bitmap and elliptical gradients so I'll just quickly show you that. Select elliptical You can see there we've now got our little ellipse and before I start what I'll do is I'll change these colors to make it more visible for you. So I'll keep that one white and we'll go to the gray bar and we'll make that one red and there you have it. All right so if I move either of these sliders you can see that they're moving independently of each other. And if I check the maintain aspect ratio, you can see they're now locked together and, and the size changes proportionately on both axes. Again, I can click on rotate to rotate my gradient and I can click on reverse to reverse my gradient. So hopefully that's explained to you how these little buttons work for you. Okay, we'll just left click, drag to the bin and delete that layer and we'll create a new layer clicking on the checkerboard. Okay now we're going to look at the bitmap gradient and this can be quite interesting so let's just click on bitmap and we'll select an image and usually simpler colors work best. In this case I'll use this little flower here and I get my icon centered again using the snapping option and I'm left clicking and dragging and you can see there that my JPEG image is beginning to appear in the middle but anything outside the gradient then is extruded from the edge colors of my image and again we can click on these nodes and rotate as we see fit or we can use the rotate button as I showed you previously and again we can alter both of these together or we can click on the maintain aspect ratio tool to unlock that and we can control each 
each node separately. So I'll just delete that layer now. And you're probably thinking, apart from creating art within Affinity Photo, what else can you use a gradient filter for? Well, I'll just quickly show you. I've got here a pretty horrible looking raw photograph. Um, this is some fungus um, I photographed at a recent show. And the reason I use this photograph, not only because it's awful in composition, but it's also awful in the way it was exposed. You can see here it's overexposed in the top. And to fix this, what we can do is we can use the gradient tool. And if you notice, we're now in raw. This is actually a raw image. So we're not in the photo persona. We're no longer in the photo persona. We're in the raw persona. If we go to overlays, and if we look in the corner, we've got a gradient tool here as well. So if I click on that, you can see we now have a gradient overlay layer added to our overlays. And if we go to our basics palette, and I'm just gonna left click, and drag from top to bottom. And what you see here is a mask. This dark red area is gonna be visible and editable, and the lighter area is gonna be less visible and less editable. This will come to light now, no pun intended, as I move the exposure slider. So if I move the exposure slider to the right, you can see my image gets even more overexposed. And if I move it to the left, it gets less overexposed. And you can see, because of the gradient, we're only affecting the top portion of our image. Again, I'll move it to the top. And if you look down this bottom area, it's having very, very little effect. It's having a marginal effect because it is a gradient, but it's having less effect in this area than it is at the top. And again, I'll move this to the left to drop our exposure down. And that's what we're looking to achieve. So. I'm going to check this now just by clicking on the show clipped highlights button. You can see there we've got our red markers to tell us where our image is, is overexposed. And if I double click that to reset it, you can see our starting point shows large areas of these mushroom or fungi are overexposed. And if I take the slider to the left, it has a marked improvement and it doesn't affect the bottom area of our image which is correctly exposed and I'm just going to use this brightness slider now to eat into that overexposure a little bit more and I'll go to my shadows and highlights and I'll drop my highlights and there you can see we've now fixed the overexposed image and if I click on this little icon up on the top toolbar um, it's labeled mirror view and you can see the side-by-side -side images. This is the image we started with. And because we introduced the gradient mask from top to bottom, we've now been able to get rid of this overexposed area. So hopefully that showed you how you can use the gradient tool, how you can change the colors and have multiple colors on one gradient and how you can use it as a quick mask. Now I used it here in this example in the raw persona. But likewise, you could have used that in the photo persona just as effectively. I hope you found this little video tutorial useful. And if you did, please like and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.